Black. Heels on that How are we out? Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District monthly meeting. It's great to see so many people here. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. This is a special pledge because it's Flag Day. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, I'd like to take a quick moment of silence. Uh, Selectman Regina Bonds' father passed away, Tom Bonds, so can we take a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Okay, so everybody knows John Kane because he's, he, uh, he's here, he's going to talk about uh, some of the things that are going on. Uh, he's the marketing director for the Hampton Beach Village District. So now that we have you here, you can uh, see what's going on for the summer, and then we'll 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 work our way quickly through this. Okay. John, I will be as quick as I can. John, if you want to just hold the microphone, you can talk from over there. If you like. I need. Fine. I got it. I'm good. I just need props. That's all. Hi again. I'm John Kane. Hold. Let's go behind the thing with the other one. <laughs> okay, give it back. Give it back. You know, you'll end up with feedback. We'll get his grandson to teach you. Know, you know, I'm all right. Uh, again, my name really, is you're not show business. <laughs> no, obviously. Um, again, my name is John Kane. I am the marketing director for Hampton Beach Village District. And I also reside here at Hampton Beach. And for many of you, I am at the top of your street. I'm at 115 Ocean Boulevard. You all, I'm sure, know where Blink's Fried Dough is. The big White House, the dog that's always out in the porch. That's me. Uh, so I'm kind of in the middle of it and know we, what your problems are. And I have seen the same issue. But I'm not talking about that. I am going to be talking about marketing real quick so that we can get on to what we're all here about. This year, um, and I'm looking for Mr. French. Someplace. He's left. What did you yeah. want? Glenn French has put uh, together a great program. Yes. We have over 100 musical acts on the uh, seashell stage. We have one tonight with the Reminiscence, followed by fireworks at 9.30. And we will have 18 of those fireworks shoots. Just to let you know, with the July week on those for the fireworks, we're going to have them twice. It's going to be one heck of a band for a week. We will have them on July 4th. And to be consistent, we will also have them on Wednesday, July 5th, and then every Wednesday after that. We will also have a special shoot this coming Saturday. And as you all have been up and seen, the Sandcastles are starting tomorrow. They will be finished on Saturday. The awards will be at 8.15. Um, they will have a concert also up there. And immediately following the concert, as usual, fireworks will be at 9.30. So those are the few things I want to tell you about. The highlights, again, we are the Master Sand, uh, Sand Sculpting Competition. Children's Week uh, is going to be 14th to the 18th. Talent Competition, which is really taken off for us, is going to be the 25th, 26th, 27th. Uh, at the top of our street, on the top of H Street, in between H and I Street, uh, just about every Saturday, we will have a major volleyball tournament which is all, it's a, it's a great tournament. I really get into it because it's, it's young kids, a lot of young girls between the ages of 8 and 18, uh, fills up the beach, and it brings all families. You'll see all the tents going around it. So those are the kind of family events that we really strive and, and gear our, tour, our, our tax dollars for. Um, Seafood Festival will also be here. Um, one thing I can't forget uh, is that Mondays, Starting uh, July 10th, July, uh, yes, July 10th, thank you. Um, we will have the movies varying times, different movies, depending on, you know, what, what we get to show. And I would like to thank the Debbie Babo. Uh, she has been buying the, uh, the movies for us for the last three years. Uh, I had to fire my wife. Uh, uh, I did. Uh, at the request of Debbie and a couple others, we have we have dogs and um, you know doggy one, doggy two, doggy three. That's all we're seeing. So 
Debbie has mixed it up a little bit, and we laugh about it. Uh, it's, it's a big joke. Uh, but anyways, it's great, and we have a lot of fun with that. Uh, going on quickly, uh, Hampton Beach has again been recognized as one, number uno, from Coastal Living for the top boardwalk in the United States. So let's give us all a hand. The work that the state's done and, and the, uh, the other side we've done and what we've, we've been working on uh, has brought it to the attention of thousands. And when I say thousands, I say, uh, give me one second, I will tell you exactly. Please put my glasses on. Facebook, which I'm sure you all heard of, we had 117,000 117, people reached. And we had 780 shares, 1,600 uh, 1, uh, likes, and I think it was like 100 different comments. So uh, that's like hitting a home run. You know, that, that's just going viral. And all that does is basically we just keep on feeding it. Uh, it's very cost effective. This gets picked up by the media all over the country. Seacoast Online's picked it up already. Eagle Tribune's picked it up. Other news catches, WMUR, pick it up. So it's, it's great that we, we do this little bit um, and we don't have to spend any of our tax dollars trying to get the word out there of how great Hampton Beach is. Um, if any of you need this poster, and some of you may like it, and put it in either a rental cottage or your own cottage, feel free to go up to the Chamber of Commerce. And Julie Leonard is right here. She will be at the desk. <laughs> And Jazz Stash Julie for one of the calendars because it gives you all the information that you need and it gives you the ties, which you're going to be talking about. Okay. Well, I'll tell you how. Well, you can, we'll stay back for later, but anyways, these are free. Uh, you pay for them, so please go up there and pick one up so that you can put it in and, and let you know which particular bands are uh, playing and which ones aren't. Um, again, the, we have 10 master sculptors that will be coming on uh, the beach. They already started working on that. They're doing their build-up today. And they start at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, and they will uh, complete it in three days uh, for a total time of 24. And as you all well know, the awards will be on Saturday night. So go up there, see what they're doing. Um, they're master sculptors. They're the best around. Um, and enjoy it. You're paid for it. Is there any questions in regards to marketing? I'm kind of rushing, so I, I, I just want to show yes. the coloring book. Oh, I don't absolutely. know if any of you have this. This is the Hampton Beach coloring book. And you don't have this. Nobody has. Well, we, you can get it at the chamber. Do you still have the book? Yes, we do. Um, it, it was put out by us two years ago, I believe. And uh, it's lovely. It shows all of the things that we do. And, and uh, please go get some. If you have grandchildren, particularly, or children, please go get you some for your family. It's been updated this year, yeah. So please go by and get them. And if you have trouble, if you run out, Julie will get them from us anytime she needs them. So please do that. And your, okay. kids, your kids will definitely enjoy it because yeah, I've, I've seen my... Actually, the big kids like it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, Julie, we've I'm seen sorry. your artwork. <laughs> John, did you have the, um, the tie charts printed yet for the site? Yes, absolutely. Um, so and if you want those? individual tie charts, there are little ones that you can put in your wallet. Those are also up at the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and Julie can hand you out. Now the Village District is now printing those out. So um, a lot of people, fishermen and, and uh, sorts, or um, if you're wanting to go to the beach and reserve the front row seating, depending on the tides, um, this will help you. <coughs> so well, if there's no further questions, I will let the meeting begin. Thank you very much. So, uh, Glenn French was supposed to speak tonight, but uh, he has some issues up at the seashell stage, so uh, we want them solved before uh, the bands get on, so uh, he'll, he'll probably fill us in next month. But John went over all the different concerts that are coming, coming forward. Um, so we'll be really quick, and then we'll get to whatever we can do to help everybody out here. Obviously, there's some big issues going on. Um, so, Maureen, do you have any old business? No, I just I just wanted to say that we did have the promenade at the prom. It was a big success. The Winnicott Junior Prom, when the kids promenade across the stage. I don't know if you have any people that did that. It was lovely, and uh, we decorated. They had a great Gatsby theme, 
and we decorated. We had the Continentals on the stage for them and so on. It was a big success, just to let you know. So that's all I think I have. Well, I'm going up the same street at the beginning of June. The high school, when it cut it, had a concert on the stage. They are an incredibly talented group of high school Indeed. instrumental and chorus both. Unfortunately, their weather has never been great for their concerts. But we encourage everyone to encourage them, and they really like coming to the show. It's kind of an attempt to be a community. That's it. That's it. All right. So um, I, I, I just have a little comment to make, that the Village District is here to not only help the businesses, but help the residents and the property owners of the, Ham of the Hampton Beach Village District. That's all of you, a lot of the businesses here. You don't have to be a resident for us to listen to you. If you are a property owner, we're here to help. Okay, we're not, we're not always gonna agree with everything, but we're always trying to help everybody. We're, we're here for the betterment of Hampton Beach. So I'm really excited everybody's here. Um, uh, I, I wanna stress what we do. We do a lot for this beach, and a lot of people don't know what we do. We run the fireworks, we run the concerts, we advertise, we promote, we do those websites. We, we just do an awful lot, and a lot of people don't know we do that. Uh, for years, I didn't, when I was here for years as a business owner, I didn't know all the things that we did. And uh, together with State Parks, the Town of Hampton, and the Hampton Chamber of Commerce, we're a team, and we all work well together. So uh, we're here to help people. Um, we're also here to help the businesses. We're here to help residents, owners, everybody. So uh, I think this is great you're here. And, and we have on our website, thehamptonbeach.org. There's a lot of copycat websites, but on our website is our contact information. So if there's anything you need, you can contact us, get the number of that, or you can come right up. I'm at the Pelham Hotel right on Ocean Boulevard, across the playground. You can come in and ring my bell, and, and uh, I'll, I'll come and help and answer any questions. So going from that point, uh, I'm going to skip the approval of minutes and go right to public comment, and then we'll go back to that. Um, so this way we can uh, hear what people have to say. I guess there's some flooding issues. Um, John filled me in on a lot of things going on, and we have a couple parking lots. If there's some point that you need to park an emergency, we're all for helping. So I don't know if you want to start. Yeah, we have we have sort of a prepared uh, statement or Great. request, and so uh, hi, my name's Mike Borbo. I'm a resident on uh, 44 Hobson Ave, and all of these people are my friends who randomly and independently decided to show up here tonight. So thank you. Um, we want to say thank you to the Hampton Beach Village District um, for agreeing to meet with us and put us part of your agenda. My wife Debbie just handed out uh, copies of a short letter signed by uh, 22 of the residents, um, there's been some more since then that have expressed interest too, uh, with some attached pictures that I hope will help guide us through a little discussion uh, today. So why are we here? Uh, we're here this evening to uh, request assistance um, for our um, neighborhood to address some of the ongoing flooding issues. Uh, we believe those issues have gotten worse over the past several years, not only due to rising sea levels, but also to increased development in the area. And it's uh, flooding in our neighborhoods, and it's beginning to place a hardship on the families, and it's causing some real and property damage, um, as well as some environmental issues. So we're seeking your guidance tonight um, to support us and help us maybe address some of these concerns. So to provide some context, there are some pictures in the, uh, in the handout. If you turn to page three, um, and we do, by the way, have a book here that we'll pass around in a moment um, that has probably hundreds more. I, I tried to limit it to let's just kind of get the gist of, that, of what we're talking about here. So these are before and after pictures of development work on the end of uh, Keith Street, with the first two pictures there, uh, which is adjacent to our properties. Um, this work added a little land mass in our area and created a little bit of a diversion of some water in, into, um, into our areas. Turning to page four, the picture on the top is sort of the final product of the Keith Road development work. So you can see they did a very nice job. It looks lovely. However, that extra land mass area that's different from the first picture, you can see the, 
that sort of taken up space uh, where water previously went. The bottom picture on this page is one to give an example of maybe some of the safety concerns going on. This is the, obviously a fire hydrant um, that is underwater and not accessible should we be in any case of an emergency. Um, that is a regular occurrence with each of the floods. Page five shows some of the environmental concerns. Uh, if you look carefully in the pictures, I tried to point them out. There are a couple of trash cans floating in the water. Um, they're not being respectful. They are spewing about their contents. Um, and the, uh, the lower picture there shows the fire hydrant again underwater, but also shows trash actually floating in the, uh, in the water. So what happens is as the water encroaches, it comes in relatively clean, but it picks up everything from the neighborhood and pulls it back out into the ocean. Um, so I would think that would be an environmental concern. Page six are just a couple of examples uh, that were a little bit easier to see of wall and foundation damage caused by the floodwaters. The salt water repeatedly coming up uh, eats away at the concrete um, and it causes it to deteriorate in a relatively fast fashion. And then finally on page seven is uh, kind of an example like the first one where there was some uh, added um, landmass to build the police station there. But you'll notice that even they are kind of having the same problem. The arrows actually point to flooding encroachment on the parking lot there even after they did some development work. And the addition of the, to the right there is the addition of a wall which created a new landmass, same, same type of trick. More landmass in the same area. Um, raising up of all those properties. So these are just a few examples of the damage and the environmental issues. Uh, my wife will hand around the photo album. If feel free to flip through it while we're sort of chatting here. Um, it, it, as we were coming here tonight, other residents were offering up more pictures. Um, there's There are lots of uh, damaging pictures to see. Uh, in the photo album, you'll also find some photos um, that should be concerning uh, automobiles somewhat underwater. Um, so the ocean water washes all the oils and things off the bottoms of the car and back into the ocean. Uh, and in one case, a very recent case, over on Manchester Street, someone's vehicle actually got totaled. Here we go. And, and there was one on Hobson, too. So, so it, it's creating sort of real damage. Um, and anyway. So. So what are we asking for, right? So turning back to page one, um, unless you can wave a magic wand and abate the water. <laughs> okay, no? All right. So if that can't be done, um, the, the four things that we're asking for really at the bottom of page one, which is we're hoping for some short-term parking assistance, a place to move our vehicles from that neighborhood uh, mm -hmm. at the um, beginning uh, of a flood and then leave them there during the flood period and you know we'd have to run and retrieve them um we're hoping for on it says here the hampton beach village district has two lots on ashworth ave um that we're familiar with it, looking for that safe and secure spot number two is uh if there is we we're not sure if this exists an advance warning system either by phone or some companies or some places use um New Hampshire alerts is, a, is an example of that where it may something we can sign up for to alert us to when this is going to happen. I think that's part of it. Looking at tide charts is not always clear as to whether or not it's going to be a flooding event. Um, the numbers don't always tell the whole story. It's a combination, as one of our engineers will tell you, of air pressure and some other things um, as to whether or not it'll actually be a flood event. And I think those agencies do that. They already know the answer. We're hoping to get clued into the answer. Um, and number three, providing an ind independent evaluation from an engineer. Um, I believe I've heard that there's an engineering um, evaluation going on for the Boar's Head location. Uh, we're wondering if how that started or if you have any suggestions on how we can get into that study. Um, and then the, the final one is a uh, sort of a request, it's a request for support. Uh, dealing with the town and with environmental services, if you're not familiar with the process, can be very daunting. 
and we're looking for some assistance and maybe some encouragement from this group to those agencies to help us with being able to potentially raise land around our properties to at least stop the water from touching the concrete of the foundations of the buildings uh, and or for raising the, the homes all together in the permitting process and all the things that you have to go through there. Also, um, as Mike was saying with the high tides, we have a high tide scheduled for not this coming weekend, but the last weekend. Thank you. We have a high tide schedule for not this coming weekend, but the last weekend in June. So we are very, very concerned. We most, all of us just went through the Memorial Day high tide and um, ended up, a lot of us moved to the parking lot in town, which was fine. It was very nice, but um, it was inconvenient. So anything that this, you can help us with regarding parking would definitely be a, a very quick beneficial fix for most of us here in this room. Right. Most people have visitors like during the weekend. Sure. So, and those visitors don't have a permit to park anywhere in Hampton. So, uh, yes. Um, Mike, uh, I know you've done some renovations to your front of your house. Yes. You have a nice little patio out there, and um, um, that's approximately 14 inches or 15 Eight, inches. It's 18 inches. 18 yep. inches. One of the photos that I've seen in here uh, puts about four inches of water on top of the 18 inches. That, that's street level and up, so it's 22 inches deep, which is. I'm just. I know it's happened to me. Right. Calipers go, <laughs> rotors go. It's a six hundred dollar break job. So, so we have the parking lot at which we call the clues lot. That I don't think we get any flooding that way, do we, no. Mike? No. no. This lot here, can, if you get a big flood, this lot will flood as well. So I don't want to tell you come to the fire station mm -hmm. because it'll be just as bad as as over there. The so front part, the front part of the town, if you can work something. With also, the front part of the town lot does not flood. I did try with the town. I called them prior to Memorial Day weekend. I was told they have seven spots at Zesto's parking. And I was at Zesto's, Zesto's parking. Zesto's on High Street. I was told there's seven parking spaces. That's I asked which right. ones. She said there were seven spots. I said, what happens if they're filled? Call the schools. I called Winna Cunnant, left a message for head of maintenance. He never called me back. Have you talked to the town manager? I spoke to, I, spoke to um, I believe, the town manager's administrative assistant. Okay, so we have that lot, the clues lot. Um, we have 20 I, parking spaces. No, we, we have more than 20. So we've leased a lot of spaces. All right, so other than any time from after Seafood Festival till Memorial Day, that lot is empty, so that lot could be used. He's what was what uh, Mike's saying is there's 20 available spaces sure. for this coming flooding. Hopefully, it won't be a flood. Um, we hope not too. We hope not too. And what day? What day is it? The Fourth of July the, weekend. The 20. Uh, no, the 20. The 23rd, 24th. Next weekend. 24, 25, 26. Recording, yeah. So the last weekend, I believe, is uh, June 23. At what 23, point do we know? That we're, no, no. What what the question is is there's these high tides, and we don't always get these floods. King, one, you have your king high tide high, once in a while. And, but it's, it's right. But but the, the Memorial Day up. the Memorial Day tide was not a king tide. It was an astronomical high tide. I brought the June tide chart. We myself and some of my neighbors looked at it and it looks relatively high just as relevant to Memorial Day. We're concerned as Cindy mentioned that most of us this time of year have guests, residents, some of us are already renting. We need to be able to tell our family renters that don't have um, residence stickers where they can park and that's a major concern of ours because we too don't want to get into vehicle damage. And also, like, when you start renting, I never even considered this, like, where does the liability lie when you're renting out your property to people that are probably going to have two or three cars in your driveway, some small, some big, that potentially could have to go start your car and have severe damage or total? I mean, where does the liability lie here? 
<laughs> or I believe, I actually, Cindy, I did a little research on that. I believe it's with your homeowner's insurance. It's funny, I talked to somebody, you know, an authoritative person, they said it's not your homeowner's insurance at all. I would suggest you check with your insurance agent. I just don't want to say that. Yeah, exactly. What would happen is the person who owned the car would probably have collision insurance. They would file a claim through their collision insurance, which would give their insurer a right of subrogation to come back against you if they thought you were fault. Mm. And to be honest with you, I did speak to someone that didn't agree with that. They said the homeowners would have nothing to do with it. It would, be, it would fall on your auto, and that's exactly what they would do. Ultimately, it would come back to the homeowner. They would come after you, the insurance company. There's ways to get around that. You have to alert them. You know, check the tides. You have to be aware. If they're aware of it, then it comes down to them. So you have to have a protocol in place before they rent now. And you want to make sure that your homeowner's insurer was aware you were renting. Right. Oh, right. Definitely. <laughs> or you wouldn't have any insurance. But, but in these flood areas, we, we, I've been dropped by one insurance company because we, we were declared a flood area. Mm -hmm. So my rates went up higher. I found a, finally found a company. So I pay high insurances for because we have high water. Yep. So we're paying, more, we're paying more money. Oh, it's because getting back, it's getting worse and worse. I yeah, I, I could show you some really high insurance. Do you, most of the peop you people have flood insurance no. on your no. properties. No. Okay. If you don't have a mortgage, unit, they're not no. required. Oh, I know that. I I'm aware of that. I have flood insurance, but I do have a mortgage. So we're not going to. Let me. Yeah. It, yeah. Yes, it is. I, I maybe don't want to divert the conversation because you're all these are good pieces and parts of conversations, but the things that we're asking for are different than what do we do about extra water. Um, there, because we can't stop Mother Nature and the water necessarily. I don't think the town is going to want to build a giant wall around everything, um, like they did up the big sea wall. Like yeah, the, um, know, yeah, <laughs> or or some sort of damming system for the harbor. I mean, you know, that there's all kinds of ideas, but the um, that's why the question about the engineering study. <coughs> you find out what options are available for water abatement, and then. The other more immediate requests were, how do we sort of protect our cars Im immediately? And you're dealing with the short term, yeah. intermediate, and long term. Yeah. We tried to hit them all. Yeah. And <clears throat> your problem is going to be truly in the intermediate, long term. It's a totally politicized issue in all kinds of different sorts of life. You're going to have to deal with the town, the state, and the federal government. And what you have started here tonight is a wonderful way to begin that process. I would suggest you contact the people who worked on the dam issue on High Street. They spent several years with a private petition citizen warrant article before they got the town citizenry to approve the warrant article. Do you know what year that was in? Probably a couple of years ago it was finally passed. But these people created an organized group and went to the town and went to the town residents and sold their position on the time. A second organization that could be quite helpful is the Hampton Beach Area Commission, which will meet again in September. It's usually the fourth week of fourth Thursday of September. Fourth Thursday. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Hampton Beach what commission? Area, Area Commission. Area. Area. John Nyan is the chair of that commission. Bob and I are both on that commission. Yeah. And you can ask him for an appointment, which means his permission to speak. The, part of the charge of that commission is to, if he him to, to improve Hampton Beach and to protect Hampton Beach. I'd also suggest you go to the town and ask for an appointment with the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. All of you go as a group. Yes. Uh, and I'll give you, I'll give you a, a little advice. Watch the last Monday night's beginning of the selectmen's meeting. A group which is having a, a dispute with Bernie's about noise was at that meeting, and they are doing the kinds of things you are thinking about. They had an evaluation decibel levels, which is a form of an engineering study. They created a group. And they went to the town and asked for some relief. Bernie and the town, and they seem to be working toward an amicable solution. Yeah. 
but it's because they formed a group, they made their issue known, and they just kept going at it. Eventually, something will come of it. The town is going to have a Warren article next year for a couple of million bucks to work on North Beach, the seawall. There's a part of North Beach, the town owns that part of the seawall, and it's degraded. So the town, the town is working on the ocean coming in, but it's, it's going to have to consider more the immediate problem, which is flooding now from the um, estuary of the wetland park. And I would say you, you've got to criticize it. You've got to make your group as large and as reasonable as possible. Would that be one, one issue we haven't addressed, and it's just a, it may be a minor issue, but for me it wasn't. When I got here this spring, my backyard was loaded with reed grass and yeah. junk lumber floated into the yard. I don't have a truck. Yeah. I had to haul all that stuff to the landfill in my car. And the town won't pick that up. Is there any possibility they could have a, a spring cleanup that used to have one? They, they would say it's a. It's like everything in a community. It's money. Oh sure, I know that. And what you have to do is go in and say, as taxpayers, we're entitled to some of that pie. We have these problems, and maybe with your cooperation, some of that money could go to working on these problems. Uh, but. I think eventually you can get there. It won't be quick, but stay the course, follow the political process, and you may find at some point it'll work. But you take a while, and I only mentioned briefly, you bring up this issue of flood insurance. That is a moving target. In fact, the House of Representatives member who was shot today was to have a committee meeting on flood insurance today in Washington, which was obviously not out. It's, there's a dispute in the Congress between the coast and the inland. The coasts are where the floods of greatest economic magnitude occur, and the people in the middle of the country are saying, we don't want to pay higher rates for flood insurance to protect New York, Boston, New Hampshire, whatever. Uh, so you kind of follow your congressmen and your senators. Make sure that they're aware of your position on that issue. It's all intertwined at different levels of the dance. But it's, it's not impossible to it's, it's really not that complicated. You've got a simple issue. I got water where it shouldn't be. How can you help me? And just keep pursuing it that way and politicize it in a non-aggressive sort of way. And I think you'll eventually win this many people. It's wonderful. I'm wondering about uh, Rockingham County Planning Commission. There are there are there are members of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Rockingham County Planning Commission. If there's something that they can do uh, to come up, so Hampton is part of that. Mm -hmm. They are they are actually part. Of, the town pays fees into that commission, and then they are also members of the the Hampton Area Commission. So I'm thinking that that could be a source for engineering source that it wouldn't cost us anything because it's part of what they do. So that, that could be something could work on. And I mean, they came up with a simple solution back when um, off of Island, was the Island Path when they, they had the, the floodgates opening and closing with the, and, and I'm wondering if by doing that, did that move it? You know, because the water's going to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so that, that could be, you know, maybe there was another issue so there. Island Path has floodgates? It's, it's yeah, the, uh, Island and Brown. Yeah, yeah. Brown yeah. that always flood. Yeah. yeah. Those little bottles. Bottles, bottles. And they open and close. And, um, so there's got to be, a, there's, hopefully there's some thank type you. of solution, I think. No, that's great. We weren't uh, sure if we didn't know those other groups, so thank yeah. you. So um, back to the, like I said, from after Seafood Festival to Memorial Day, a uh, lot is empty. And we can do that, but we need to have some type of system where there's, so we know who's in that lot, and it's not just people saying that can, they want to use that. John, lot. can I was thinking of this that would print up some kind yeah. of a thing with the, with your address on it, okay? Saying that with it you have give, been given permission, yeah, and you can, can have those printed I, we up for us. Do permanent stickers like the town does <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, we didn't want okay. stickers, but, but I understand. No, you know, the, right. the Consequences exactly. of that. Exactly. It would be something, with, something that yeah. you would only use yeah. when so, you needed. Could, could I work with you on that? 
I would work with him because he's the one. I, he's the one that's going to print it, and you know where he lives. I do. So, so, but I would like to review movies. what it says. We, we, will, we will review what it says, but you need to make sure that you have your address on it and so forth, and, and that it's a temporary thing. Can we maybe do a survey and see what lots are actually dry? I don't sure. go around. When it floods, my car stays at the top. Yeah, so I don't drive around at right. all. When you so, say dry, you're talking a certain Well, I'm elevation. talking maybe mm -hmm. Ashworth, the church parking lot. Okay. I don't know, that, one, I don't, that one floods. Does it flood? Yeah, yeah, that, that one I don't, I don't live That flooded that. the night, the Memorial Day. Um, the church parking mm -hmm. lot. Does, does Island Path flood out? I'm I don't sure know about Island Path. Oh, no, no. 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 Okay, but I will have the, the okay, parking so lot there. And does the have to go up through the tide to get to, okay. to it. Okay. Okay. Could they come down? Um, I'll tell you, I can work with you on which one is what. Okay. So that's great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. What kind of numbers are we talking from vehicles? We're probably talking, um, well, there's 22 residents that signed this letter, and there's a lot more that were interested after that we had completed it. And I know. I would, I'm sorry, I did not count how many residents there are. Well, no, I'm, I'm, are we looking at 60 cars, cars, cars? Are we looking cars? at well, 150 cars? Well, has at least a minimum of two cars. I would say, yeah. And then I know our home, Memorial Day weekend, we had six cars there. Yeah. So we need to find something in town yeah. off right. the beach because our lot is only... That lot's only 20. 50 cars. In the summer, it's only 20 because right. uh, we have leases. And I think what you're going to have, I think once we start... There are other streets that's correct. that have property. And Riverview, sure. Harris, Perkins. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're first. Johnson. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we started. So, I mean, right. I think if we open, we're going to open up. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a, a, a big problem. That. Be fair. It's a big problem. You've no, also got the streets off Brown Avenue yeah, right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Where I am on Joanne floods all the time. Right, yeah. right. And we had difficulty finding parking. Yes, I heard. John had told me that. And I did question that because mm -hmm. I did call the police department. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finally worked it out with the chief. But in the beginning, I was not very happy. So at midnight on Memorial Day weekend, that Friday evening, we were most of us were outside at our homes as the tide yep. was rising. Yep. And we saw some folks trying to get down the street, not aware of the tide. So yeah. that's the other piece why we think maybe the alert system would also be helpful. I know the state of New Hampshire has New Hampshire alerts. I also know that the town of Hampton, um, I reviewed the website, has an alert system that you can sign up for. But it, some of it looked non-emergency and some of it looked emergency. So I was going to follow up with the town manager on that as well. That would be something when you went to the selectmen's meeting, mm -hmm. all of you, when you show up and you, you, you said you had, had spoken with Christina. I don't remember her name. Well, that's, that's the assistant. Okay. You get on that, get on in the agenda, and all of you go and mention that alert system when you're there. Say, we need a, some kind of a system that... The system definitely exists because we get text messages, right. emails, and phone calls from the high school and the grammar school. Yeah, yeah, right. It, so they could put it right on, on the that. website. You know, mm -hmm. could I suggest, um, I consider that flooding as an emergency type of thing, just as Absolutely. a tornado would be or something. Correct. They have those, uh, those speakers that are up on those poles, and they can broadcast to this entire beach area. There's going to be a high tide, king, yeah, king high tide at a certain time. They could broadcast it so that you'd actually hear it yeah. in your house. I don't know who owns those. I think well, that's the power plant. They, if they have oh, in the past. The power plant. In the years that I've lived here, I can remember one time <laughs> that there was going to be a hurricane, a hurricane or a big storm, and they got on that thing and they said, and all of the, they were activated, yeah. and they, yeah. they said there's a, you know, whatever's coming, you know, Gwendolyn or something. They, did, they do use it. If you do have a meeting with the selectmen, at least one of us three will be there with you. All right, you. great, thanks. Oh, we plan on having a meeting right. with the Right, so when you have it, uh, okay. we can support you all we can. Um, and then I would think if we can come up with some solutions that will we'll push through uh, we really Warren Articles. Yeah, we appreciate your help and your support, as Mike was saying, and everyone here in the room. Um, we, we really appreciate your time and anything that you can do to assist us. We really love the beach. Most, a lot of us have been here for generations, and we want to see continued generations to come. But in order to do that, we need to protect our property and our personal being. And 
Also, we just want to make sure that if there was a medical emergency that the vehicles could get to those that needed them right away. Another situation is um, a lot of people don't vote here. They have homes in the, they have homes other places. Make this your permanent resident. It, it definitely makes a difference. If you're, if you're a voter, it's it's important to... Can I just make one more comment on Manchester Street, for Manchester Street? When they were doing the infrastructure improvements along Ashworth Ave, they redid almost all of the streets on the Marsh side, but there were six of them that we never done. Know. They ran out of money, they said. Uh, is anyone... How can they just drop that? I, I question. I question that back then. That? Yeah, I question that back then. If you if you have a contract with someone, that's to finish the job. I, right. I never understood why. And there's no drainage on us. Okay. I'm so sitting on this board, sir, sure. and my street also. Uh, we have no drainage. Right. I live on Harris uh, uh, Ave. We we were also one of the streets that they stopped at, right. and we have no drainage as well. And we have some serious flooding yeah, going on. Flooding the rain yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I know it. I and they mention, just don't address it. I wanted to mention to you, the town of Hampton. I don't know if you hear early enough in the season, but the town of Hampton does a. Um, it's not a trash pickup. They do a special pickup, and then you, if you have tree limbs or stuff like that, they have a special time they when they go around. They won't pick, they won't pick, they won't pick that one. They won't pick up the, no, uh, no, the yeah, well, one time they did for me. I was standing outside. The guys came down the street, and I said, listen, I have a bad back. I can't. And they won't come on my property. But if it's on the street, they picked it up. Next high tide, I put it on the street. They did not They didn't it touch it. So it all yeah. depends who's coming down the street. Yeah. But if you went as a group mm -hmm. and asked, but, you know, the thing is that where I live on Ocean Boulevard, when that tide comes in and, and it comes, it's the marsh. It just comes right in and it, it, it's amazing. And if the wind is blowing correctly, mm -hmm. yes. it comes all the straw yeah. along with it. Yes. And everything else that flows, yeah. uh, you know, boards and... Tables. Oh, yeah, all kinds yeah. of yeah. trash and everything. That's yeah. the other... Yeah. That's yeah. an issue. Yeah, that's... People don't think about but it does happen. Well, they had a front end boat to come down Manchester Street and put it right back into the marsh. Yes, John. Oh. You know, I, I think it's great to always see these people turn out. Those, I would think, I'd like to think most of the people in this room are very familiar with Hampton Harbor Tides. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You're not. If anybody that is it, get on it because. It shows you these are these are events that happen every new moon and every full moon. You said it bang on the chart. But the Hampton Harbor tide shows you the height of the tides. Yes. Once you get over ten, start looking at the wind. Once you get over ten and have an east wind, look for rain. Because that's the perfect storm when you have that happen. Right. I know from things that here in the past, I was against the location of the station and I wanted it down the other end, elevation. The elevation at the Hampton Beach State Park is five feet over where we are right this minute. So if you figure the clues a lot, you're going to be at least two and a half, three feet over. And I realize Mike said he's got 20 spaces up here. We understand the precinct has a seasonal thing and you know the money they got to pay to pay a million dollars. So people, when it's not a when it's not a month that's in demand, it's not a problem with parking. When it is demand, Mike might have the space because. You're exactly right when you said the tides are coming. You just look, it tells you exactly. This time you're going to be at midnight, one, two, yeah. in the morning. Yeah. So people go down there and they can get them out in the morning when you can still re rent. The, right. other thing, the other thing you have is if people work together, they can block each other in. Because if you have two spaces and everybody knows and they're working together, okay. they can block each other in. That 20 spaces might all of a sudden become 40 spaces. The other thing is we've heard about the cooperation between the state and Hampshire. And Hampton Beach, you're in five foot elevation. They have more parking spaces than anybody in this town, and it's the closest place. You know, you know between two points yeah. is right there. So parking, the, the the state park, park yeah. which yeah. Yeah. you could have. Yeah. 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 No, maybe we could get uh, Senator Ennis involved in that. Senator uh, Dan yeah. Ennis. Yeah. That what we call the state park, which as shows as you come over the bridge, the big light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Elevation. reservation. Yeah. HPAC. Yeah. Who's on the right hand side? 
when you come to the bridge, who's being parking area where the boats go out? Who owns that? That's, 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 that's comes under the Port Authority. Port Authority. Yeah. That's, that's another the, one you might, because they're not. They're they never. They nobody's the ever there. The other side, the fishermen and the party boats are not really. They need that space that they have. I think you'd have a hard time getting anything. They do. Across the street, check it. they got you know acres. Like Don't they? Eight. Didn't they flood? They used to flood. Not five feet high. I'm in Glade Path, 47 Glade Path. I bought my house in the in the late 70s after the storm of 78, and the reason it was sold to me, Francis Jake's great nice family. It was it, it had flooded. Um, I tell people when I bought my house, I bought a house in the swamp. <laughs> Ten years later, I bought a, my house was in the marsh. Ten years later, it was in the estuary. The only thing that's going up is the tides and my taxes. <laughs> When you talk yes. about, you know, to the speaker here, there was, you know, talking that I see, you know, your points. Number one, the short term, buy rocks. Get your parking space up. You know, if you can work with your neighbors. Well, that also I takes think, the town, too. You, you can't, that's all you can't cough issues. in your backyard yeah. without I mean, go for that. In the short that. term, is get your parking space. Run the glade path. I rate, I have 1.41 acres, yeah. of which I would say 90% is marsh. So every other piece, I raked every single rock, and I can have a spot for one car, right. so that I don't have to leave my property during a storm event. It's a pain, and people don't understand it. There's times where why my the water might not go against my house, but I can't drive down the street to right. get there. Right. So you know, I'm, I'm I'm very familiar with it. Um, the state should be the one that provides the space for these. The precinct, because it's a little bit closer, when they can, Mike O'Neill, you know, has a handle on that stuff. But um, like I said, get, get very familiar with the Hampton Harbor ties. And you know, it's not, a, it's not a rocket science. It can tell you right to the minute. The only time it, it, the tide can actually go up an hour, hour after what they're calling for is with a, with a wind event from the east mm -hmm. and a rain event. That's the perfect storm. You get all three. Thank you very much. Also, if you yeah, have something that. Oh. that you, when you go before the select one yes. specifically, if you have ideas that you want to implement like rocks or whatever it was whatever it is that's the time to do it you need mm -hmm. to sometimes give them some possible solutions that you have sure in order to make it go and we had a great meeting saturday night prior to coming to this meeting 28 of us got together to talk about what it is that mm -hmm. is prioritize what we'd like so oh, i can imagine that we will be regrouping probably even a larger group of people mm -hmm. the next time around to get everything um, documented and then we will yeah the more you can present we would like this and this and this mm -hmm. the you. better off you an example an example of that would be at the place code <laughs> where they go yeah. before the selectmen in order to put those the riprap in front of their properties to mm -hmm. protect them and they get permission from the town to place those stones from right. the town not the wetlands I, they ask when you okay. go ask because that's an example mm -hmm. the people at at Place Cove, yep. go uptown and they get permission and they select and give them permission to put those big rocks yep. to protect their property. So if you wanted to that. do crushed stone or something and raise it, a, you know, a foot or something, I realize you're well, maybe in a they wetland, should do it. Right. You know, you're in a wetland, but the selectmen do have some powers. Okay, so thank you. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what we need is someone to tell us a solution right. to compromise and say, look, if you do what you just said, mm -hmm. if everybody does that, it's going to eliminate a lot of the water. We need someone to tell us what we can do together. I can tell you as an example. Well, before you tell them, I think, too, the DPW, you might want to get involved with. They might have solutions for you. If I wanted to know whether I should be putting something there, I think I'd check with them. And when you go again before the selectmen, see if you can't get somebody from the DPW to also talk to Who is the uh, director of DPW? Chris Jacobs. Chris yeah. Jacobs. Chris Jacobs. So we can just evaluate the, the streets right. that are having a problem and say, these are your four options, maybe. That's right different price ranges and if everybody can get together then we have the solution solved yeah right. and you know and the other thing the other thing is is that um, i was just up at the town hall last week talking with uh rayanne and also uh jay demon with the conservation because of a flooding issue you know what can they what can the parking lot behind me what can they put up to re, to keep all that straw from okay. coming onto their thing and they they have they're open to listening to the solutions. You can put up a chain link fence just to keep it from, you know, off of your property. They were open to, you know, sometimes a bale of hay that, with a, uh, that you put, yes, yeah, spike a bale of hay will keep that straw from coming onto your property. It's not going to keep the water off, but 
you'd be surprised what a piece of poly the erosion. Will, yeah. what a piece of poly rope will do. Poly rope floats. You string a piece of poly rope in certain areas, you can actually keep it frozen. Right? All right, let's, so the rest all right, let's get we'll some, some different people speaking. <laughs> She very well could. I think she These are the people that. I do. Yeah, these are the people to talk to. All right. Hold on now. See if she will come. Jean has a question. She's been trying to speak a little You have to talk a little louder, huh? Speak up now. I wanted to address the issue that most of the people on the opposite side of the railroad do have walls. But a few years ago, I had to replace my wall. And I asked if I could go up higher, and I was told no, I could not go up higher. My wall is 24 inches, and yet right shortly after that, within a year's time, the parking lot that is on um, Ashworth right next to the Royal Crest Market, uh -huh. they put up a whole up. Uh, a wall there and so out of curiosity today I went down and I said do you mind if I measure your wall and he said oh no go right ahead they allowed him to put up a wall that was 51 inches high now why is now he they meeting the, the town uh, yes. who allowed him was, was it was allowed. Allowed. who allowed them I don't know but the town he had a wall he has a no, wall no, that's, that's 51 okay. inches and yet within six months before that, when I wanted to increase the size or the height of my wall, I was told no, I could not do that. And and then we were out looking, you know, in the area just today over on Keith, where they have all the, I think there's eight new houses there at the very end of that street. Mm -hmm. Their whole thing is encased with a wall. <laughs> so yes, and, and so why? Are some areas now? This is another thing. When you go before the select, when you get up and you do say exactly what you just said. And it's nice because they have a nice culvert drain. Oh, lovely. Through the, through yes. The wall, like tall. Yeah. Wonderful. So I mean, why are some people allowed to do this, and others we pray every time we hear the strength in numbers? Will still be the there. But I, that's a very good question. I think I'd ask that at the selectmen's meeting. Yeah. It's a very good question. And a lot of people are saying that's what part of the water problem is. Is since this has happened with the walls, water's going to go that, somewhere. That's right. It's not just the tides. We understand about that. It's a risk. We're in flood zone. But the, the people that have been there a long time have noticed a dramatic change. After when this. they built the condos on Harbor Road, I live on Harris Avenue. And they put culverts, they're lovely. All the water came down our street during that Mother's Day storm years ago. So that's exactly what happens. Everybody's protecting their area and they're wrong on it to you. You need to address that. I'm going to pass it back there. He, he's loud enough. <laughs> uh, my name's Joe Cross. I live on Hobbs Staff and my wife and I are year round residents. Joe, you, you might want to come and get this because what happens is that they, they won't be hearing this at home for people okay. that are watching. I live on uh, Hobson Avenue, 31 Hobson Avenue. My wife and I live there year-round. Um, my question was about the parking lot, specifically the one we've used it for years, the one that's at the top of 8th Street runs all the way down towards M Street or whatever, you know, on, o on Ocean Boulevard. That, in my opinion, is the highest spot on the beach. I know you used to park something saying, don't feed the meters. My question is, my question is, when do they stop writing tickets at night, and when do they start in the morning? Does anybody know that? Yes. Eight, twelve, depending on the weather, because I watch. I'm sorry. What is it? Eight a.m. Eight a.m. Twelve. Um, twelve midnight. Midnight. 12. midnight. They write tickets till midnight. Yes. And the summer they do. Depending on the weather, the conditions. If you go out there, because if those lots are open, you know the spots open at night because not all the bars are full. Yeah. <laughs> so. When we have this tide, if we can park up there, which we do all winter, if, if there's a high tide, we'll go park up there. Uh, there's no way that lot is flooding unless we have a hurricane. So if we could have access to that, even just overnight, because the really high well, tides, the total cars, and I got a car totaled, totaled 10 years ago or so as well on Hobson Avenue. So See, that's where dread comes in. That's where they and get after that, area that's, commission. That's so on the commission, we have red. You cannot park a car in that lot overnight. Is that what you're saying? You can. No, can. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what oh, I mean. Can. We used to do it all the time. But we did it during the winter when there's nobody ticketing. So I'm wondering, specifically, for example, next week when we know it's high, at what point could you park up there and it would be safe overnight, and then you just go up at 6 in the morning and get it? You can do that. You can do that. I have. Yeah, after I, midnight, I, though, I, you're safe. That. I do it. The tide gets, you know, it well, comes in at midnight when it's that high tide. Barking, and all of a sudden it's there. I get up, 
Yeah. Not on Ocean Boulevard. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, one, the main, yeah. main lot. So we'll go over the, the car and just go. It, yeah, and we've been doing that for years. But we we all the way to eight well, If I park there at 11 o'clock, because I know it's going to be high tide at 1 a.m., I don't want to get ticketed for the one hour that I'm parking up there to save my car. I think we have to, you know. Not only Do we have now, any control? The district have any control over that lot? State. Nothing. That's a state lot. There's nothing to that it's at all. Not even, it's, it's funny. It's not even DOT. It's DRAD. You, every lot is a different group. Yeah. <laughs> this beach has like five or six people in charge of different five or, you know, companies. We can check with DRAD in Congress. We can check with the commissioner. Yeah. And, and that, that, that's, well, that's where, the, know, that's where that Senator... That's definitely the highest spot. I know, I know Senator yeah. Stiles would be all over it. Okay. And, I I, and, and talking with Dan, Dan seems to be very receptive and he'll he'll really work well with everyone Thank he was you. at our meeting last month, last month. and uh, he said he, he wants to represent Hampton so is Steven still on your street uh, yes and yes did he get him to Senate, talk yes. to his buddies yep we can oh. <laughs> he's on our team <laughs> He's hiding quietly back there, but I'm right. right no, I think you all, uh, many reporters, uh, acceptable to everything that's happening, and Deb, you a marvelous job. Uh, I think one of the important issues also, as I'm listening to everyone, and they're all important, but the health condition, health is uh, that uh, is so important uh, because with all these uh, a different all the debris flying all over i know i had to move my barrels a few weeks back and uh i picked up all this uh garbage so uh, i think this is important and uh, you have a strong contingent of folks here and um, i think and with the parking situation i believe you have a wonderful commissioner at dread and if uh he's hears about this, I'm sure things will happen. Thank you. I think we're good at this time. We want to say thank you to the no commissioners for listening to us and uh, hearing us and actually piling on, so we appreciate yeah, no, that. We'll, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely go to bat with you. There's, we don't have a lot of power on, on, on some of these things, but we have some influence, so we, we can try to help. And I will work with John on at least four. Sorry. I'll work with John regarding um, some spots at least over in the clues lot for the interim so that with the next high tide, um, we can at least have a short-term solution for um, us. And I do understand what you were saying, sir, regarding... You know, we're not the only two streets on the beach, oh, and we understand that. I, I'm, I'm worried about the, I manage the parking lots for the I, precinct. I figured. And, you know, we're in prime season. Sure. I can't guarantee that there's, nope. on the day of the high tide, there's going right. to be 20 available spots, but we'll accommodate as much Thank as you. possible. And we can appreciate that and understand that as well as John was saying earlier this evening. You know, we understand that the revenue that the village district brings in also provides entertainment for our families and our guests and our renters, such as the sandcastles and um, the fireworks and everything. So, and Hampton Beach is a great beach, and we want to keep it that way. So, thank you for everything that you're all doing as well to help us and to also make the beach as great as it is. Great. Thank, thank you. you thank you for coming. Thank you. I would just make one final comment, okay? Every few months, we have the town planner, the conservation commission people come to our meetings to kind of tell us where we're at and get, trying to get in, into the community rating system, which is a method to reduce ins what insurance premiums. We have other members of the town council. So if you, if you, somebody wants to give us um, your email address, when we have the sort of people coming you'd have an interest in, we could let you know and that you could let great. these people know. Yeah, so what we did is we created our own um, email account, so I will give you my email address and then I can from there get it out to the group. If there's any email addresses that I don't have for anyone, I know I keep forgetting. If there's any email addresses that I don't have for anyone that would like to be added to the email group, please see me after the meeting and I will make sure and add your email address. All right. Do we have any other public comment for something different? Does anybody have any, any comment about anything else? Okay. 
on that, we're going to jump back to approval of minutes from May 10th. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I'll so move. I'll second. All in favor? On that, we'll go to closing comments. Maureen? Good luck with all of this, and uh, feel free. I, I just told John that that uh, you should have our phone number so that if you do run into a stone wall, that we will. I do have. Them. Thank okay, you. Good. The website Excellent. is very, very helpful. It has Excellent. a lot of inform information that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Good yeah. Look, this, this whole situation is really a dire emergency. In the end of it, 12, 13 years I've owned my property on Manchester Street. It's really become dramatic. Ride down to Salisbury today. Watch the work that's been done now. It's, it's amazing. They did not get one drop of water on this street. And I really would encourage everybody to take a ride down. The neighbors are open and willing to talk to you about the work that was done down there. It's a five million dollar project. Um, there's barriers at the end of the street that are four feet above the ground that go eight feet into the ground. And there's a pumping station. And it takes care of six streets down there. Who paid for it? Um, the Army Corps of Engineers paid for seventy percent of the project, and the town of Salisbury paid thirty percent of the project. Wonderful. And it was a solution for good. Yeah, it's a total solution. Okay. And it's been the structure in the streets, and they even landscape properties. It is oh, it, it's worth taking a ride down. Are we sure they're not pumping it to Hampton? <laughs> 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 Someone, who was it? Yeah. I, I just wanted to, I'd like you to introduce yourselves to this. Oh, okay. You know, I'm not sure. We want to start with Stephen, and I'm going to work our way down. Stephen LeBranch, I'm the treasurer. Uh, Bob Ladd, I'm one of the commissioners. Uh, Chuck Rage, a commissioner, and a, pro, a pro, uh, business owner on the beach, the Pelham Motel. Mari Buckley, commissioner. John Rice, secretary. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank and you we're always much. around, so you can always hear us. But those are our stage names. And do let us, <laughs> do let us know when you I are will. going to be going before the session. I will. Yeah. At least one of us will be I'll there, if not the three you. of us. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. This is great. I mean, give us an idea. All right, don't leave now. I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Yeah, 6.31. Have a great night. <laughs>